So, this is my fate. Could not I have been more? A photo series called Whispering Waste, read and written by Derek Ho. Tucked away behind the Wisconsin's Ho Chunk Casino lies a graveyard not full of bodies but trash. Here, at Dane County's 112 acres landfill, where we seek to hide away all that once served us, lies the trash we throw into the garbage bins daily. To put the scale of this facility into perspective, this landfill, when full, has an area of 85 football fields worth of trash, 11 stories high. Despite the behemoth scale of this site, it is currently estimated to be about 70% full and is slated to be capped off within the next 5 to 10 years. This estimate might actually be considered too generous, and that's because of the alarming rate at which the landfills are being filled at. With the pandemic happening, uh, there was a huge uptake in hand sanitizer bottles, disposable face masks, single use takeout containers, and everything plastic. There were once 1,600 smaller landfills scattered around Wisconsin 20 years ago, and now that there are only 35 other landfills in the area, an operator told me. This dwindling number of landfills has mainly stemmed from the not in my backyard mentality, requiring landfills to occupy large swaths of undesirable land sites further away from our home. This distance from our home has lulled us into forgetting that our trash is, is an issue that can and already has affected the environment. Our environment. Of the trash that lands up in this film, 15% of the lot is plastic. These plastics are the most worrisome as they take an estimated of 450 years to degrade compared to the 80 years of normal organic matter. This persistent quality that has made plastics so desirable has actually made it deleterious for the natural environment. Unlike other organic matter, plastics, plastics don't decompose but fragment into smaller particles called microplastics, plastics smaller than 5 millimeters. And these microplastics can be found around the earth. In the deepest of trenches, the tallest of peaks, microplastics are there. It has been found in our water, food, crops, and unfortunately, even in our blood. These plastics can act as vectors for nasty pollutants like heavy metals and pharmaceutical drugs, transporting their toxicity to unsuspecting victims like you and me. So before all these plastic fragments, turn into even smaller plastics, I decided to pay them a visit at the landfill with my trusty landfill guide, Roxanne, a sanitation engineer who has worked there since 2019. We had to take a five minute car ride around the fringes of the trash mountain, navigating mushy terrain that which was previously non-existent. Soon, we reached a point where the car could not take us any further and had to continue up the hill on foot. My first reaction when I stepped on this soft, mushy cupboard of trash was not the sense of awe of the scale of the trash mountain in front of me, nor the disorientation from the company of the thousands of seagulls around us. It was in fact this odd sense of tranquility. The synchronized team of heavy machinery buzzed away in conducted harmony. The tail spills, the double shove, compactors compress over and over. A couple of the croons of the seagulls overhead and soft carpet of trash below. I felt as if I was at an artificial private beach with tides of rubbish crashing into the land. In a sea of trash, I saw the all too familiar Amazon and instant noodle packaging among other items I've owned in my lifetime. 
witnessing the fate of an item at its supposed end was paradoxical. We threw it away, and yet here it remains, and would most probably even outlive us. This made me wonder, if trash had a voice, what would it say? Though I tried real hard to listen to its whisper, I learned that inanimate objects can't talk. <laughs> Who knew? So I decided to ask his caretaker as a proxy on the road back down. As she drove down this deep hillside, looking forlornly ahead, we shared a moment of silence. And replied, So, this is my fate. Couldn't I have been more?